Okay, for synthesis reactions, the key in recognizing a synthesis reaction is that one product is formed. So you can see here that reactant A plus B plus perhaps more are combining to form one product. And that's the key for a synthesis reaction. So we'll look now at some common patterns that we see with synthesis reactions. For the first one, a metal and nonmetal combine to form a binary ionic compound. Hopefully that's not a surprise when you think of a metal and a nonmetal coming together because you've been reviewing your nomenclature. So in this example, aluminum plus Cl2. So I'm going to suggest that you pause the video and attempt to complete the formula of the product here, an, an ionic compound, so remember your cross-down method, and then balance the equation and see if you can fill in the state also, thinking back to the subscripts video. When you're finished, try uh, or turn the video on again and check your answer. Okay, so I used the cross-down method. You can see rough work on the side here to put the charges of aluminum and chloride ions, cross them down, come up with AlCl3. I know ionic compounds are solids with those ions in the crystal lattice, and so I put the state here. Next, I balance the equations, noticing that I need to end up with six chlorine on each side and two aluminum. Okay, if you have any questions about this, jot it down now and make sure you ask in class. Okay, nonmetal, the second pattern here are two nonmetals. Two nonmetals will combine to form molecular compounds. Now, this is a challenging one for sure because there are lots of different options. And so, Perhaps you'll be given a clue as to the nature, like the identity of the product. Um, perhaps just use your nomenclature. So for example, nitrogen dioxide. So I'm going to tell you that this is a synthesis reaction for the production of nitrogen dioxide. So you're expected to write the formula of the product and the state and balance the equation. So pause the video, do that now, and check back in. Okay, check your work. Now, here's another example I've left a line here for. So I'm asking you to write a synthesis reaction for the production of disulfur pentoxide. So try that now. Write a synthesis reaction for the production of disulfur pentoxide. Okay, so you'll notice that I wrote the formula uh, interpreting the prefixes, disulfur pentoxide. Recognizing this is a nonmetal oxide, I realized that that is a gas. And then I set up my blanks for the coefficients for balancing. I originally started with sulfur, making it to have two, making there to be two sulfur on each side. But then I realized with the oxygen, I was going to have to double the product to end up with 10 oxygen here, putting a 5 here. 5 times 2 would be 10. And so that means that I now have 4 sulfur, so I come back and make sure that I have 4 sulfur. Again, if you have any questions, jot them down so you can ask in class. Okay, the third and fourth patterns here are, or the third pattern, sorry, is really a repeat of pattern number one, but I've just been specific with the non-metal saying that it's oxygen because I'd like you to get comfortable with the term metal oxide. So essentially when a metal and oxygen combine, they form an ionic compound, cross down method for the formula, and we call that a metal oxide. So go ahead and complete the product for this example, including state and balance the equation. Okay, so I used the cross down method again to write the formula of the ionic compound magnesium oxide. It's an ionic compound, so I wrote S for solid and then proceeded to balance the equation. In the pattern of number four, I am taking the metal oxide. So for example, that magnesium oxide from example three and reacting that with water. So I specifically put H2O as a reactant. You'll notice the liquid state. So the pattern here, and, and this is a bit trickier now because it's not two elements combining to form the product, it's two compounds combining to form the product. So the trick here, like really you need to memorize this pattern that a metal oxide and water produce a metal hydroxide. So if you'll recall your hydroxide polyatomic ion is OH negative <clears> 1. <throat> Again, be in the habit of putting brackets around the polyatomic ion in your rough work. 
the magnesium ion has a charge of positive 2, and so we cross down our numbers here and get the formula Mg bracket OH bracket 2. Now, until I've taught you how to use the solubility guidelines, we will call this aqueous. Okay, so you can anticipate forming aqueous metal hydroxides. Now, to go ahead and balance the equation, check our magnesium, and we see there's one each. Then we check, well, hydrogen or oxygen, but I notice hydrogen is only in one place, so there's two here, and two times one here, so that's two. So that really leaves me with checking the oxygen. And I notice with a one here, one times two is two, and I have one oxygen here and one oxygen here, so in fact, the equation is balanced. Okay, so in the way that reactions three and four go together, a metal and oxygen forms a metal oxide, and then metal oxide and water <clears throat> forms a metal hydroxide. Reactions five and six also go together. You'll see a non-metal and oxygen forming a non-metal oxide, and then we see what happens when that non-metal oxide is reacted with water. So, for example, in number five here, sulfur plus oxygen, I'm going to ask you to write the formula as a product of sulfur dioxide, and then go, including subscript, and then go ahead and balance the equation. So it turns out that the equation is already balanced, and you'll notice I used the state of gas because this is a non-metal oxide. So if you recall from the subscripts video. Okay, now in reaction number six, I'm going to take that non-metal oxide that I just formed, that sulfur dioxide, and react it with water. So the sulfur dioxide and water, now here's a new pattern. You're learning that it forms an acid. So we need to write the formula of an acid. So we always think for an acid that H with a positive one charge, so the hydrogen ion is always present. And then the question becomes, what else is present? That'll have a negative charge. And we'll go ahead and cross our numbers down, finishing with AQ as the subscript. Well, take a look at the non-metal that's present on, in the non-metal oxide, and we'll see that it's sulfur. And then we also have oxygen to include. So we're either looking at sulfite or sulfate here. And unless you've been given more specifics, you really are guessing at this point. So using your background knowledge of the different sulfur oxygen polyatomic ions. So if we were to go with the um, sulfite ion, charge of negative 2, and cross the, formula, cross the numbers down, we'd get H2SO3. If we had done the sulfate ion, SO4, negative 2, and cross our numbers down there, we'd get H2SO4. So we're always going to write AQ after these. So what I'm suggesting at this point, if you're not given any other instruction or direction in the question, is to just use your knowledge of the polyatomic ions and pick one of those to be your product. So I'll go with the first one I did here. And then go ahead and balance the equation. And as long as you can come up with a balanced equation, then you know, that would be acceptable. But I don't expect you to know which acid to predict, so if I'm wanting a specific one, I'll definitely be um, telling you the name of that, and then you use your nomenclature knowledge to write the formula. Okay, turns out this is already balanced with two H's, one sulfur, and three oxygens on each side, and so I don't need to write any coefficients there. Okay, that's it for the synthesis reactions.